Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, well, for the last few days, I've been trying to build the biggest rocket I've ever built in Kerbal Space Program. And frequently, things haven't quite been working out. In particular, if you try to put your average giant super humongous rocket on the launch pad, it will literally spontaneously explode on account of the launch pad not bearing any resemblance to the mythical figure of Atlas that would support the world on its shoulders. No, everything just explodes, so you need to come up with various ways around it, generally involving launch clamps. So a quick uh, return to the assembly building and the addition of a number of launch clamps, and Bob Kerman is ready to go. Uh, yes, actually, he's not. He's going downwards. So, this... Uh, <laughs> now let's see if we can rescue this situation. Throttle up and stage, 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 stage. Uh, fire everything. Fire all the engines. I've got to get out of this hellhole. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he's disappearing in there. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You can do... Oh, look, he's starting to move. He's starting to pick up speed! I can see him emerging phoenix-like from the fire of the- Oh, no, wait, he's turning over! Turn! Turn, turn! Fix that! No, no, wait, wait, don't land! Throttle down! Wait, wait! Come on, come on, parachute, parachute! Oh, crikey. So close! He was so close! But now he is so dead. But we have a... We have a rather impressive funeral pyre for him. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, aren't the launch clamps not supposed to move? I mean, the launch clamps are supposed to be static, right? Ah, <sighs> okay. Back to the drawing board. Okay, so we have applied many more struts, many, many more struts, more struts than I have ever seen, I think, in a single vehicle, and we're ready to go with the Moonbeater 2. Launch! Um, wait a second, did I throttle up in, in time? Okay, oh, no, 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 okay. Um, keep going, maybe for that middle section. The funny thing is, right, even if those outside boosters get completely wiped out, as long as the core is in good state, it could actually still complete its primary mission, albeit not as quickly. Come on, I th no, I think he's falling downwards now. And, uh, you know, it's still going up, still going up. Yes, still going up. That's a good sign. The vertical speed is positive. There he is. Oh, wait. No. No, we're... Oh, now I get wiped out by something. Oh, well. Well, after several disastrous attempts, we went with a redesign. This is the redesign that we came up with. And, of course, you're watching this at four times regular speed because uh, it is very, very frame rate intensive. And as impressive as this thing is, blasting off the pad, ultimately I decided that this probably wasn't worth it, simply on account of the fact that it wasn't fast enough for my, for my needs. So the iteration continued, and instead of some complicated staging system, I just slapped on as many, you know, three tank giant boosters as I could on the bottom there. Uh, this was running at one frame per second, and I'm trying to run this at about 10 times normal speed, or 12 times normal speed, and you can just imagine how painful it was to actually fly this thing. Ultimately, for all its impressive amounts of thrust, I mean, literally, I think this is the most thrust you can get out of a vehicle without part clipping, largely because the camera doesn't go any further out. You'd have to use a mod to get a, move the camera further out and let you build something bigger. No, this thing, uh, yeah, it still turned out to actually ultimately be too slow. The amount of acceleration it achieved coming off the pad was inadequate for the purposes for which I was designing this spacecraft. So, we went back to the drawing board again. So I returned to the old ways of building outwards rather than upwards. Uh, that meant that this, the rockets on the upper stage would actually be useful and they would be fed from these three and a half meter parts on the exterior. It actually seems to be working pretty well, albeit at a horrifically low frame rate that nobody wants to deal with. However, if we fast forward further into the launch or later into the launch, well, it's a moment best experienced through old me. 
and almost burnt out. 14, 12, 11, 14, uh, well, no, no. stage, stage. Come on, get those stages out of there. Sweet, clean. S oh no, no, what's that? Uh oh, okay. It's exploding, but that doesn't mean that we have we've lost anything. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good, looking pretty. Oh wait, there's something still exploding. No, that is not looking so good. Okay. Um. Well, this mission is not a complete loss. At this point, I could probably still go to the moon and back easily. Uh, okay, let's that's don't don't cook the cockpit. Just oh, cooking the tanks. It's cooking the tanks. Okay, but it's running off. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to trigger the abort scenario. We're going to bring Bob Kerman back. Throttle down and stage. Stage everything. We're just going to have the survival pot and pod on the top do most of the flying here. So we're fastest way is for us to just ditch all this stuff. I should probably bind an escape action. There we go! We're free and now we just need to fly it back home. I know, of course, it's back to new me, our old me. You know, old new me is actually older than old me, but it, it's very complicated if you think about it. But it was old because it was recorded in the past. But look, we need to do this at four times regular speed because otherwise it's kind of slow. We're actually just going to do a, you know, a Falcon heavy flyback kind of trick. We're going to try and land back at the launch site here, or at least relatively close. I should probably know the coordinates of the launch site so that I can figure out my impact point, but never mind. We're falling, we're landing on the grasslands, which is close enough for me. Just gonna keep on using this to make sure that when the, that parachute deploys that it doesn't tear off, because that would be a really bad thing. Okay, so falling down. We have about seven kilometers per second of delta V in this stage, which is Pretty nice, actually. As I said, you know, I could have just took that whole thing to the moon and still come back safely, but we're not going to do that. We're coming back because we want to do the moon run in style and with speed. Parachute deployed. Engines firing and just a very, very careful touchdown. Okay, so we're ready to go. We've made things bigger still. Notice the addition of some solid rocket boosters down the bottom. Adding, frankly, a tiny amount of thrust, but I'm gonna take anything that I can get to get off this launch pad as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, with the three tanks and those quad SLS engines, it turns out my acceleration isn't exactly stellar. Although, when it explodes, it is quite spectacular in a completely different way. So, one of the things that this video is so far failing to capture is the hugely annoying problems of working with this in the editor. This is running four times regular speed, of course. In the editor, though, God, it is horrific at times because I don't, if you don't realize this, if you try to click on the staging diagram on the on the right hand side of the screen and there is a part below it, you will pick up the part, which is very, very annoying because it means every time you want to adjust the staging, you have to scroll all the way to the top of the um, all the way to the top of the vehicle assembly building at, you know, three frames per second. So you can then move the parts around. Very, very frustrating. And then undo. Undo sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. And odds are that when you've picked up half your spacecraft and haven't saved it for, you know, 10 minutes, you are, it's not going to work. And you're going to be stuck rebuilding the whole thing meticulously by hand. But ultimately, this is what I built. And it's certainly, it's quite an impressive beast. You can see a... Uh, well, uh, Kerbal Engineer on the left is actually giving me all the numbers. If you looked at it at, at launch, it was almost 13,000 tons and 165 mega newtons of thrust. 50 quadruple KS-25 engines. That's 194 of those shuttle-type engines, all firing simultaneously in unison, synchronized with the single goal of delivering this payload on a lunar trajectory as quickly as possible. You see, what I'm working on is trying to get to the moon and back as quickly as possible. We choose to go to the moon quickly and do those other things not because they are easy but because they are likely to result in vast amounts of explosions. I could build a rocket with 
more Delta V than this, right? So this is a grossly inefficient rocket. The reason is, though, if we want to go to the moon and back as quickly as possible, the time taken to fire the engines becomes important. Sure, those nuclear engines would give us much more than the 20 plus kilometers per second of Delta V that this thing has, but they would take more than an hour. They would take hours and hours, and by that point, you would have gone to the moon and back. It's all about Delta V, but it's all about the acceleration, and that is why we are harnessing such raw power and with such danger to our pilot, Bob Kerman. So we perform a the ever so sl smallest amount of gravity turn possible. We're going straight up here. This may not be the fastest way because, of course, uh, we are suffering large amounts of gravity losses on our ascent here simply because our thrust to weight ratio is only about 1.4 on average most of the time. We're wasting about 70% of our initial delta V as we're trying to get up through the atmosphere here. Now you can see the frame rate is starting to improve just a little. I think the frame rate might have got up to like 4 frames per second, so multiply that before that, 16 frames per second. I'm just going to wait for somebody to suggest that I upload this video in 60 frames per second because that would just be stupid and I know you're just wanting to make fun of how horrifically slow this thing is. Seriously though, uh, we, we don't really get mar manageable frame rates until we get to our final stage and start descending towards the moon at of course a, the longest suicide burn ever. I mean this is, this is what this mission is, it's a, a boost straight up towards the moon as fast as possible. Then you flip around and then you're gonna do the longest suicide burn. Actually, it's, it's the longest suicide burn without using the <laughs> without using cheats or anything. Obviously, I've done a couple of super fast moon runs using uh, infinite fuel, and those are hilarious. You know, you can use the uh, Sepatrons or more likely now use those little RCS thrusters. And I, I thought about using the RCS thrusters, but it turns out that the size of the rocket you need just gets to be incredibly insane simply because the fuel requirements are so huge. The difference in the efficiency of the rocket does make a huge difference. I might go back and try it, but the rocket, because the geometry of the rocket is a little less constrained when you're using the RCS thrusters, when you use these thrusters, obviously you have to have the fuel flowing in a reasonable pattern, whereas the RCS thruster mode, you can just have the thruster sitting anywhere and the fuel sitting anywhere, and generally the thrusters uh, are, are work, work rather well. It's just that they're a lot less efficient. That's what you're paying for. Anyway, look, we're up traveling, uh, we're, we're our vertical speed is now over one and a half kilometers per second, and our, our actual target altitude or apoaps now is starting to look quite respectable. And of course we still have over like 16 kilometers per second of delta V left. Fun thing to notice is that if you replay this and watch it lifting off the launch pad, the delta V remaining actually initially goes upwards rather than downwards. Even though we're burning fuel, we're rising through the atmosphere sufficiently fast that the remaining fuel is being counted at higher and higher efficiency. So your delta V actually goes upwards during the early part of the launch. Of course, now it's going down as we're uh, we're heading towards the moon and we're clear of the atmosphere. Our uh, apoapse is now up over a few thousand kilometers. Soon we are going to be passing the moon. We're going to go through escape velocity. There we go. So now. Now we're going to try to make sure that we get ourselves on an encounter with the moon. Not just an encounter, but a collision with the moon. Now, you can estimate how long it's going to take to get there. Now it's going to be like 1 hour 20 minutes. So that's actually pretty darn respectable. We could get there and back inside a single curb in day. But you know what? We still have plenty of Delta V left. Uh, I'm aiming for under an hour, and I will I will admit that there are other people that have managed under one hour moon trips, as in one hour there and back. And the fact that I've never quite managed to build anything that ridiculously big, it does kind of uh, does kind of make me want to do it. And and the fact that things explode horrifically is always quite entertaining. 
I think actually one of the reasons why I haven't done this is out of compassion for my poor computer, who has to carry the great load of all these physics calculations on its tiny processor, and it's only allowed to use one core of that processor, albeit overclocked at an extra 10% or so. This uh, poor thing is uh, working as hard as it can, and I am finally starting to see frame rates that are, well, are, are manageable, really. And that's good because we have our course more or less locked in. We're going to get there in under half an hour, which is pretty good. And now the next trick is we're going to have to turn around and slow down. So you see me turning the rocket around to try to point the right direction. And I get a little confused as to why my rocket keeps turning the wrong way. And, and I realize it's because I had Bob Kerman set up to uh, track the target. And as soon as I set myself on target, firing the engines, he would say, no, 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 you've told me to point at the target. And I'm like, anyway, eventually we're flying towards the moon and it's time to judge our suicide burn. Now, this uh, took a little bit of calculation. I paused the game and came up with some rough numbers for when I should be firing. The suicide burn uh, interface for flight engineer, a Kerbal engineer, isn't actually quite accurate. For a start, it, it tends to work with the assumption of like 50% thrust, I believe. Uh, so you have to kind of overshoot a little, but then you can't overshoot too much because the thrust from this stage actually ends up being higher than the thrust from the final stage. So we burn down this stage and we are flying towards the moon at some ridiculous speed here. Uh, <laughs> Bob Kerman is clenching his butt cheeks here as he's just trying to make sure that uh, we fire everything correctly. Look at that thing shoot off there! Oh, this is crazy. This is suicide. This really is suicide. This is the longest suicide burn that I've done without cheating, I think. But of course the best way to appreciate this excitement is through old me. Okay, 35 kilometers, we're moving at 1.3 kilometers per second, and suicide burn number has gone positive. Excellent, that means that I have successfully managed to uh, slow down just in time. Now what I'm going to do is throttle downwards, upwards and downwards, just trying to keep my suicide burn distance at roughly just over zero, that's the important thing. If it goes negative, then it means I'm very likely to crash. I can see the shadow of the moon approaching at frightening speed, but I know from these numbers that I should be able to get down 400 meters per second. Oh, wait, we're going negative. Throttle up just a bit. 300 meters per second. 200. Okay, 100. 50. Oh! 13! Ah, oh, man! Why explode? Oh, all his engines exploded. Oh, Bob. Time for a rescue mission. We're going to make it a fast rescue mission, though. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.